Here are 65 of the best co-op VR games. Let's start with shooters. Onward is a more hardcore military shooter that's got both PvP and PvE modes. The co-op modes are like terrorist hunt modes from Rainbow Six, where you go into a map and have to eliminate a certain amount of enemies, and you can play with up to four players. This has got a really low time to kill, so you need to use cover and work as a team. It's available for PC and Quest. Pavlov is another military shooter with more spongy enemies. It has PvP and also it's got zombie modes, as well as modes against AI, where you fight against progressively harder waves of enemies. This is faster paced than Onward, so it's more suited to if you want to run and gun, and it's up to four players available on all platforms. Zero Caliber is yet another, you guessed it, military shooter. This one is built around co-op with up to four players playing through point-to-point -point missions and has a story campaign that you play through. It's a little rough around the edges in places, but overall, it's great fun in co-op with some friends and it's got some nice set moments. This is the closest thing we've got to a Call of Duty campaign in VR right now. It's available on PC and Quest. Arizona Sunshine is an early VR game where you and one other person can team up to slay some zombies. It's a bit old and janky now, but this can lead to some hilarious moments when you look at your mate and he looks like he's just had a shit in his pants. This is available for the Quest, PC and PSVR 1. Payday 2 got VR support a few years ago. The VR support isn't the best, but there is a mod that improves it. It's the same game as Flat, so you're robbers, performing heists in loads of locations, having to fight your way out of the entire country's police force when you inevitably get caught. This is only available on PC. Contractors is another military style shooter with PvP and up to 4 player co-op. You've got a zombies mode and various small missions that you have to do fighting AI. I really like the gun handling and the power of the guns in this one and it's my favourite PvP shooter. This is available on PC and Quest. Dead Effect 2 VR is a VR port of a non-VR game that looks surprisingly good and it's got lots of content. It's an older game so expect some jank but it's still fun to play with up to 3 people and it's got all sorts of unlocks and weapons. This one's only available on PC. Serious Sam 3 VR is another port of a non-VR game, and it's got two-player co-op support. This is a boomer shooter, so it's extremely fast-paced movement, and you're gonna need to run around constantly killing enemies. Only play this one if you've got strong VR legs, and this is only available on PC. Gunheart is a looter shooter that didn't sell well, but it's a bit of a hidden gem. It's set on a sci-fi planet with aliens that you have to kill. It's got some fast movement with jumps giving you good agility. But this one's got some really good comfort options like teleport so anyone can play it. Up to three player co-op and it's only available on PC. After the Fall is a post-apocalyptic Left 4 Dead style VR shooter which is built around unlocking and upgrading your guns playing point to point levels with boss fights at the end. Up to four people and it's available on all platforms. Downward Spiral Horror Station is a single player sci-fi shooter that can be played with one other person co-op. This is a true hidden gem with a nice campaign with a story that'll take about 4-5 to five hours to complete. It's got some really nice lighting and some interesting movement and weapons as you float around in Zero G. This one's only available on PC. Seeking Dawn is another looter shooter. This one is set on a sci-fi alien planet that's full of life with all sorts of creatures that you come across as well as other space marine type enemies you have to kill. It's a little rough around the edges, and the gameplay can be very grindy, so I'd only buy this one on a deep sale. But it can be played in co-op with another person, and you get to see a nice butt within the first few minutes of the game. This one's only available on PC. Crisis Brigade and Crisis Brigade 2 are old school arcade shooters similar to Time Crisis, where you get moved to a specific spot, and you have to kill all the bad guys before you're able to move to the next location. It's pretty tough, and it doesn't have any free movement, so you have to physically crouch and move behind cover. The first game has a Minecraft low poly look to it, but the sequel is more realistic visually. This can be played two player co-op, and they're both on PC, Quest and PSVR 1, but not PSVR 2 yet. Survive is a four player zombie shooter, which borrows a lot from Left 4 Dead, but it's slower paced. You have levels to clear, but they're more open areas, and you have a map with objectives that you need to go to, rather than a linear path. There's loads of weapon unlocks that you can find throughout the maps. It's a little janky at times, but it's got very positive reviews on Steam, and it's available for PC and PSVR 2. Zomday is an early VR game with half-decent graphics. This is very fast-paced, with lots of different guns, enemies, and cool slow-mo. It's very cheap at full price at $10, and you can pick this one up for peanuts on a Steam sale. This one's only available on PC. Raw Data is another early VR game, and it's more of a wave shooter, but it does have a story and levels that you go through. It feels a bit dated, so grab it on a deep sale, but it's still fun to play co-op, and it's available on PC and PSVR 1. Guardians Frontline is a sci-fi shooter with RTS elements, 
where you can spawn in and manage things like turrets and command other troops, whilst being on the ground with a gun fighting. It also has co-op and it's available on PC and the Quest. Evasion is a sci-fi class based shooter with decent graphics. The gameplay loop is a little basic and the environments could use more variety. I recommend it on a sale and only if you're playing it with a friend. This is available on PC and PSVR 1. Crossfire Sierra Squad isn't coming out until early August, but I wanted to include it as it's releasing very soon so it'll be out for a lot of people watching this. It's got a single player campaign, co-op missions and challenge levels. Visually it looks great, hopefully the gameplay can match and it's releasing for PC and PSVR 2. We've also got a few dungeon crawlers. Carnage Chronicles is a good melee dungeon crawler with decent graphics and a decent length. It has a handmade story campaign, a mix of classes to play with up to 4 players. It can be a tough game solo, but it's much easier with more people. This one is only on PC. Legendary Tales is still in early access, so still more content to come, but this is one of the few physics based melee VR games with multiplayer. It supports 4 player co-op and a campaign to play through which is still a work in progress. This one is for PC only for now. Trickster VR features procedurally generated levels with up to 4 player co-op. You've got 9 different mission types with progression with more and more difficult levels to play through. It's an older game, so a little dated, but it's very cheap, and it's available on PC and PSVR 1. Demio is a tabletop adventure game, where you throw some dice and have cards that you can use which grant you moves and powers. This isn't really my sort of game, but I ended up enjoying it way more than I expected, and it's very well made and available on all platforms. We've got three survival games, which include The Forest, which has VR support with motion controls. The controls are a little clunky, but you still get to experience the full game with friends in VR. You have to physically swing to attack and open suitcases, and overall it's the best way to play the game. This one's only on PC. No Man's Sky also has got VR support, and you get to fly, drive and walk across thousands of planets. You can fly seamlessly into space and back down again, and it's a massively popular game that can be played with other people both flat and VR. It's available on PC and PSVR 2. Requisition VR might not be a survival game in the traditional sense, but the game is all about fortifying a base setting up traps and crafting unique weapons ready to survive waves of zombies that are trying to eat your brains. Up to 4 players and currently only on PC, but it's definitely coming to PSVR 2 as well. What if you want to poo your pants in VR in front of other people? Phasmophobia is the most popular multiplayer horror game ever made, and it has VR support on PC with a PSVR 2 release coming soon. You have to go into haunted buildings and use tools to try and figure out what sort of ghost is haunting it, then get out alive. Propagation VR is a wave shooter in a subway and it has some paid DLC for 2 player co-op. It looks great visually and has some massive spiders which is always fun, but at least your mates there to back you up. This one's only available on PC. Labyrinthine is another multiplayer non-VR horror game that has VR support. Like the name suggests, you're going to be going through labyrinths trying to find a way out whilst avoiding all sorts of creepy monsters trying to kill you. It does have a campaign to play through, as well as procedural levels with unlocks and loads of different styles. This one's only available on PC. Devour is another one that took inspiration from Phasmophobia with up to 4 player co-op. You have to go into a building and collect 10 living things, like in the first level you have to collect goats, then you bring them to the back to sacrifice them. Each time you burn a goat, a monster becomes more and more active until you get to near the end where they're running around like a rat twat. This one's only available on PC. Forewarned is another Phasmophobia style clone. This one takes place in Egyptian tombs and it's got mummies, daddies and all sorts of hideous family members chasing you. This one's only available on PC right now. Project Terminus is a ground up VR game available on Quest and PC. It's got a story driven campaign that you can play through with up to 4 people. It's definitely a bit janky which can add to the fun when you're playing with friends, but if you want to play something spooky with other people on the Quest, this is one of the only VR games available right now. SCP Labra is free on Steam and it's a recreation of SCP Containment Breach with improved graphics and VR support. You play as a test subject that has to escape from a lab with all sorts of things trying to kill you. This one's only available on PC. What about some cockpit based games? Warplanes, World War 2 Fighters and the sequel Warplanes Battle Over Pacific put you into planes from World War 1 and World War 2 with a full campaign mode and co-op. This game was built with VR support in mind so you actually use your motion controllers to physically grab the yoke and throttle, you can grab machine guns strapped to the front of the plane, fire flare guns and drop bombs. It's a great VR flight game that's not too hardcore and it's available on PC in Quest. F122 and F123 are official racing games for the Formula 1 race series. 
They have a career mode where you create a driver and work your way through the ranks and it's got full co-op support where you can race with another person whether as a teammate or a rival. This is PC only and you need a very good PC to get the most out of it. Iron Wolf VR is a submarine game where you have to manage systems, fix leaks, fire torpedoes and man flat cannons to survive and can be played with another person to share the burden. This one's another only PC game. Vox Machine is a VR mech game with excellent motion control support. You physically grab and manipulate all the controls, toot the horn and boost into the air in a range of different mechs. It's got a story driven single player campaign, PvP as well as missions against AI that can be played co-op. Battle Wake is a fun if simple bolt combat arcade VR game where you helm the bridge, steer the ship and command the guns whilst also being able to use powerful special moves. It has a 3-4 to four hour single player campaign that you can play co-op with a friend and it's got PvP but that's probably dead by now. This is available on PC and PSVR 1. Star Wars Squadrons is a high quality AAA non-VR game that's got VR support for PC and PSVR 1. This game looks fantastic with a story single player campaign, PvP and PvE modes where you can team up with up to 4 players and take on AI forces trying to take down a Star Destroyer together. Battle Group VR is an RTS VR game where you're on the bridge of a spacecraft, commanding your fleet in space battles. You get to watch the fight take place right in front of you as you look out of the windows of the bridge and it can be played co-op and it's available on PC and Quest. Elite Dangerous is a hardcore space game for nerds. If you're a nerd that like hardcore space games then you probably already know about this game. It can be played solo or you can team up with other groups of nerds and it's available on PC only. VTOL VR is a VR only realistic flight game we have to learn all the systems of multiple craft. You can reach out and flick out switches and twist all the knobs and yank on all the sticks to take on missions from simple cargo transport to full on combat and can be played co-op including a paid DLC helicopter that's actually got two seats so you can both play in the same craft. This one's only available on PC. DCS is another hardcore flight sim with a big focus on modern combat aircraft. Just like VTOL you're going to need to learn all the systems to fly these aircraft and this one is both flat and VR and only available on PC. We've also got a few platformers. Windlands 2 is an amazing semi-open world platformer where you move around by jumping and swinging which takes a little getting used to but once you do it feels like second nature and it's some of the best movement in any VR game. You can play up to four players with huge boss fights. It's available on PC, Quest and PSVR 1 and is also coming to PSVR 2 in the future. Carly and the Reaper Man is an asymmetrical VR and flat co-op game. One of you in VR and the other playing on a monitor. The VR player controls the Reaper Man and you have to reach out and move blocks around to give Carly platforms to jump on and then the non-VR player then moves Carly through the world. This one's only really local co-op though. You can use something called Parsec on Steam, play online, but it wasn't very good when we tried it with lag to the controls of Carly and low resolution screen. This is available on PC, Quest and PSVR 1. Jet Island is a very very fast paced platformer where you can go at literally hundreds of miles an hour on a hoverboard. You can shoot out grapples to pull you through the world. There is some combat and this is definitely for people with VR legs. It does look a bit shit but it's still lots of fun. This one's available on PC. Here are a few games that don't really fit a category. Electronauts is a music creation tool. You can't import your own songs or clips. You have a preset song to mess around with and you can create beats and it's surprisingly fun for complete noobs who want to feel like they're actually making music. It's also got two player co-op so you can mess around with songs with a friend and it's very addictive. This is available on PC, Quest and PSVR 1. Cookout, a sandwich tale is a cooking game where you have to prepare and serve food to customers. It supports up to four players and it's available on PC and Quest. Rec Room is a free multiplayer social game available on all platforms and it has lots of different modes from VR paintball to quests which you can take on with friends. Room of Realities is an early access escape the room game where you can play with up to four players to try and solve the puzzles and get out. It's currently got good reviews or although it's a little light on content but more is coming. This is available on PC and Quest. Escape Simulator VR is a VR port of the non-VR version which has got really good reviews on Steam. This one isn't actually out yet but it is coming soon Unlike Room of Realities, it allows you and your friends to try and figure out how to escape lots of different puzzle rooms. The good thing about this one is that it's got a level editor allowing community made levels and there are currently over 3000 different community made rooms. Make sure to add this to your wishlist on Steam if you're interested in it. We've got three PC only Oculus exclusives. Landfall which is a top down isometric stick shooter where you're on foot and you can call in a mech. This is way cooler in VR than you might think. 
with some nice visuals and production values, and it feels like a battle that's happening all around you. It also has two-player co-op support. From Other Suns is a roguelite VR shooter where you're trying to get back to Earth. You have to board other ships, deal with space pirates and other bad guys, you get better weapons and keep getting fuel so you can get closer to home. Stormland is a VR shooter with some of my favourite movement. You can glide across clouds, climb anything, jump and glide your way around. You've got lots of islands that you need to take over and you can make your way through different biomes. This supports co-op and it's the closest thing to Far Cry that we have in VR. Last, I want to talk about mods. If you've got a PC, then you have to play some of these in VR with mods. They're way better than you would expect, with all of them having full motion control support and surprisingly polished. Valheim is a survival game with an incredible atmosphere. This one's a pretty hardcore survival game. You're going to need to base build a lot. There's lots of grinding for materials, but the world is worth putting some time into, and it works fully in co-op with both VR and non-VR players. Raft is another survival game, and you're in the ocean on a raft. You physically have to throw out a hook with motion controls and reel in floating vapor on the water. You build, expand, and survive with friends. Gunfire Reborn is a roguelite shooter with a great VR mod. It has a really fun gameplay loop with very positive reviews on Steam. If you like roguelites, this one is essential. Risk of Rain 2 is another roguelite that is normally a third person, but it has an excellent mod that makes it first person with motion controls. This one is a very frantic game, so it's not for people who get motion sick. GTFO is a much slower paced level based multiplayer shooter. It's very tactical, you can't run and gun in this game otherwise you will die. Teamwork is essential, but you do need a powerful PC for this one as performance can be rough. 7 Days to Die is a new mod for the open world base building survival game. You've got 7 days to scavenge, craft and build a base ready for a wave of zombies to come and attack you. Each 7 days more and more zombies come and the game gets harder and harder. Left 4 Dead 2 is a VR mod, not as polished as some of the others, but you can still aim with your hands and you can even use weapons by swinging in real life. It's another frantic, fast paced game, so don't play it if you haven't got good VR legs, but some of the most fun that I've had in VR. Deep Rock Galactic has an incredible VR mod that's been whitelisted by the developers themselves, so it's fully functional online. You have to mine your way through intergalactic levels with friends in VR, what more could you want? And that's it, lots and lots of co-op games are all available to play in VR, let me know if you think I've missed any, and as always, a massive thank you to my Patreon and YouTube member supporters.